Today's webinar is all about how you can win with Facebook competitions. Facebook competitions are increasingly popular and you're probably seeing loads of them on your timeline at the moment. But there are ways of doing it that are what I would call best practice, not only because it's the correct way of doing it, but also because you're going to get much better results. But the first step is, why run a competition? And realistically, the answer isn't because everybody else is. And I think that's when you see something happening a lot, it's easy to assume that it's the right thing for you. Um, I think one of the primary reasons a lot of people run a competition is because they want to increase their fan base. And it is. It's a great way of encouraging interest about your page. However, you're going to need to be careful because if you want to attract the right, you need to attract the right sort of people. You know, there's a lot of professional competition enterers out there. And if you end up getting lots of fans who don't engage with your page, it's going to really negatively impact um, your edge rank score, which means you will end up having less of your posts being shown to your actual true fans. Um, what they can also do is actually breathe a bit of life back into your page. It can help increase that engagement and generate a bit of buzz, especially if it involves your users generating content. You know, for example, if they have to take a photo or upload a video. I think for a lot of people, they almost forget that one of the objectives of running competition on Facebook is to actually increase your leads and sales. You can use it to drive traffic to your website. Once you've actually run your competition and you've got all that wonderful um, data on potential customers, you can follow up with a special offer or a discount via email. It's also a very good way of finding out a little bit more about your customers or potential customers by using it to ask some questions, finding out some dem demographic information about you. And at the end, I'm going to show you a really good example um, from a company called Ancestry.com who've done this. Also, in addition to actually being very engaging having user-generated content, the, one of the benefits of it is that it can be used on your other platforms. You can use it on your website, you can use it on email. It helps generate the impression that your brand has a human face and you're really interested in your customer. But before you start, and it's very easy to get enthusiastic and get going with it, is to identify what you want to achieve. So in that slide before, we looked at all the things you could use a competition to do. So identify those goals specific to this competition that you're running. Also, you need to set a budget. Um, there's going to be a cost of a prize. Are you going to do any advertising or promotion? Are you going to put some money toward that? Also, setup costs. Are you going to spend any money designing banners and artwork, having amends to your website done? And then pick a prize. Oh, sorry. Decide on the type of competition. So there's two main types of competition. You've got a sweepstakes, which is a really simple prize draw. And they're really popular because they take such a little effort to enter that you should get lots and lots of responses. But again, that depends on what you want to achieve. A user-generated content contest is going to get you more from your engaged fans, you know, because it takes more effort. They have to upload photos, shoot videos, write stories. Um, but you also have the benefit, like I said before, that you can reutilize that content. And then picking a prize, make sure it's relevant. You know, you want to attract the right sort of entrance, so make sure the prize is relevant to your business. And if you can make it something worth winning, especially if you want people to make an effort, you know, a £10 voucher just really isn't going to cut it. The best prizes are based on experiences or things that are really difficult to get hold of. So if you have a restaurant, for example, you could offer cooking lessons with the chef. So you want to get as much bang for your buck and it can be very tempting to run your competition for a really long time. But realistically, 
it's got like a lot of things it's going to have a life cycle and i would suggest sort of about two weeks to one month it gives you enough time to get the visibility and get in front of people but not so long that it starts to lose momentum now this final point is really important you have to make sure this is legal competition rule every area every country has competition law you will find it normally in whatever government department deals with gambling um, I highly recommend you check that out you really don't want to get yourself in trouble and I think you'll find is that they will all expect your competition to have terms and conditions and terms and conditions are things like having a closing date having an entry criteria for example what date are you going to announce a winner how's the winner going to be chosen and you know are you going to offer a cash alternative and then a privacy notice you have to tell people what you're going to do with the data you collect if you're collecting personal details such as their email address what are you going to do with it are you going to use it to market to them are you going to sell it on to the highest bidder it has to be stated up front and finally the Facebook competitions rules I see so many legal competition but you know I think it's worth spending a little bit of time on this you know, and they're not doing it to cause you trouble or make it difficult they're covering themselves from a legal standpoint it has to be clear that the competition is not endorsed or run through Facebook so what you can't do you can't use a Facebook function to be entered to the, into the competition so for example you can't ask people to like something to win or to like something to be entered um, you can't ask people to share a photo status update to win or you can't ask them to comment to win now one of the ways that Facebook wants you to do this is by using what we call a third-party application now these are you may have seen lots of different apps on Facebook and there are lots of companies out there including wildfire app and short snack that give you the tools to run a competition on your wall making it on your Facebook page making it really simple for you they even have special places for you to put in your terms and conditions and privacy notice look at what you want to achieve with your competition before you pick your app um, it could really do with certain level of customization um, you need to be able to put maybe change your banners for example um, once you actually have run your competition and you do have a winner you can't announce the winner on your wall you have to first contact the winner directly either by telephone email or snail mail before you start putting it on your Facebook wall and finally you can't promote it on your timeline banner now there's a whole nother set of rules related to your timeline banner and that is um, about the amount of text you can have on there and calls to action and those rules actually negate you being able to promote on um, your timeline banner um, I would really recommend you look at this link and have a read of the full competition guidelines here because we are actually seeing an increase now of pages being taken down and more action being taken by Facebook against people who are going against terms and conditions not only in competitions but in um, you know what they're putting in their timeline photos for example so you really want to achieve a lot of entries for your competition you want it to be popular uh, and the ways you can do this is you can do something do your competition as a promoted post on Facebook and the benefit of this is one it's really easy to do and it's a low cost and not only do you reach can you reach your existing fans but you can reach their fans their friends and every time somebody enters your competition when you're using a third-party app it will show up 
on that person's wall for all their friends to see. And they are increasing the number of people who are seeing the competition who are more likely to enter. Also, Facebook ads are really helpful because they can give you really specific targeting. You know, they're going to ensure that you get the right people to enter because you can really pick right down to um, a very niche market who enters your competition. So, for example, if you run a uh, restaurant based in London, you want to make sure that you're attracting people who are interested in food, who are in the right geographic area for you and probably around your sort of target age range. So you don't really want to be advertising this to 13, 14 year olds. Also share it on other social networks. Now I just mentioned earlier wildfire apps and when somebody enters that competition, it also shows up on Twitter. You can put it on Pinterest as a pin. You can add it to Google Plus. You can put it on Instagram. There is no end of other places that you can share this. Wherever you have a presence and where you think your target audience is hanging out, you can publicize your competition there. If you have an email list, which I recommend everybody has, um, do a specific email out to them. Make sure that you have a really amazing subject line so they really want to open it. They can't resist opening that email. And then make it easy to share. Don't make it difficult for people. Again, with some of the uh, third party app providers, you'll find that they will actually allow you to set something up where one, if somebody shares your competition, they will get an additional entry into that competition. So they've got a greater chance of winner. Also, if you're doing something with user generated content, that really encourages sharing because people want to show off what they've done. Now that's a really brief overview. So here we have an example of a user generated contest, which um, the supermarket Sainsbury's did for Red Nose Day in the UK. And all you had to do was have a photo of yourself up with a red nose and upload it. They made it very simple to do. Again, using a third party application. As you can see at the top of that, they have a little like button to garage sharing. And they're featuring people on that page. Now, I know if one of my photos got featured on that page, I'd be sharing it with other people. Really gives people an incentive. Now, this next one is actually what we call a sweepstakes. Ancestry.com, I, I mean, I think it's a little bit convoluted because you have to fill in quite a lot of information. However, you can clearly see what they're trying to achieve is they're trying to get you to enter, and again, it's a third party app, and then they're looking for additional information. They're looking for customer research here. They also have there quite clearly your terms and conditions as well. So that's a really nice example of a sweepstakes competition. It doesn't have to be that complicated. If you want to encourage people to enter and your objective is to grow your fans or increase your engagement, all you need to really ask for is their name and their email address. Like I said, make it easy for them to enter. Don't make it difficult. So that's a really quick power through of how you can run a Facebook competition and to maximum effect. There's so much potential when you're running these competitions and I would recommend if you are interested in doing them, start off maybe by doing them once a quarter to really keep up that momentum and keep up that engagement level. So, if you want to get in touch with me, my name is Catherine Sull, and obviously you can find me on Facebook, at facebook.com forward slash marketingmy. Also, you can tweet me at marketmy, and my website is at marketingmy.co.uk.